Hello, Lions fans, and welcome to another episode of Believe in the Lions. I am Brandon Brown, joined again by Glover Quinn, former Detroit Lion, decked out in the Lions gear. Man, got the black on. I guess let's start right there. Is that is that paying homage to the black uniforms that we're going to see on Monday night for the first time with this, these new unis? <laughs> uh, nah, man, it's just a cool shirt that I got. <laughs> Lions Did hat. you guys? Did you guys care about stuff like that? Did you did you I know some guys probably do. Did you personally care about when the when the teams would roll out a new alternate or a uniform that you never wore before? Did it did it change the mentality a little bit? Yeah, new new uniforms were cool. I mean, when we had, you know, when we first started doing the um obviously the color rush when I was playing, we had the all grays. Mm -hmm. And then for Thanksgiving, we pulled out the throwback Thanksgiving's one year. Um and then we went to the all whites because we generally didn't wear like all white. Mm -hmm. uh, they pulled out the all whites. That was pretty cool. So, yeah, I mean, having, I mean, we even went all blue. Um, we went all blue one year because when I first got to Detroit, I think we used to have, we used to wear the same pants every, uh, every week. Oh between yeah, the no, white, but... it was turning the white and the blue. We still wore the same color pants, mm -hmm. so we would never be all white and we would never be all blue. And then they changed it to where we had blue pants and we had white pants, so then <laughs> we could have more combinations. So it's always a cool thing, especially like I said, when you had the color rush games on a Thursday night, we would have mm -hmm. color rush, or like I said, at Thanksgiving, you pull out a, a, a different uniform. It was always cool. I mean, really for the skill guys and stuff like that. I don't think the O line man, <laughs> those guys didn't really care. But you know, the skill guys, DBs, corners. I don't even know if the quarterbacks really cared. I mean, the ones I played, I don't think Stafford really cared. <laughs> you know, he's just quarterback. But you know, the skill guys, we we we, we definitely was rocking. It. That's cool, man. Yeah, I know a lot of people are excited about the blackout uniforms. Um... The new uniforms in general this year, I thought have looked great, and so people are pumped about the black ones on uh, on Monday night. So let's let's talk about that Monday night football. The Lions are hosting the Seahawks. Lions sitting at two and one, uh, Seahawks sitting at three and zero. Oh. But I wanted I want that's where I want to focus. The, the Seahawks are sitting at three and zero, oh, but there's always a but. But they beat the Broncos and Bo Nix first play first start ever. They beat the Patriots. They're just not that good this year, and they beat the Dolphins without Tua. But it's it's the NFL, man. You take wins any way you can get them. I mean, we see every week teams beating teams that you thought had no chance, and so the Seahawks are sitting there at three and zero. How how do you feel about the Seahawks that three and zero record? Is, is it legitimate or is it like I said, man? You just take wins in the NFL when you get them. And, and how worried uh, should Lions fans be about that undefeated record right now? Well, I do think you just take wins however you can get them. I don't think you look back at the end of the season and say, oh, they were you know, 10 and seven or 11 and six, but they beat this, 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 and that. Uh, you just, are they in the playoffs? Are they not in the playoffs? Sure. Uh, things of that nature. So I don't think, you know, the NFL, like you say, there's teams, I mean, nobody thought the Rams would be able to beat the San Francisco 49ers without, mm -hmm. you know, Puka and, and Cooper and all those guys being out, but they did, right? So I think, you know, wins are wins. I, I think Lions fans should just be more concerned about Seattle in general. I don't care if their record was 0-3. At the end of the day, we have not been good against Seattle in mm -hmm. recent years. Seattle has had our number um, ever since I was playing in Detroit. So um, I think that's more of a concern than the 3-0 and record, mm -hmm. being able to go out and beat Seattle. So now I don't know if it was Seattle or if it was the Pete Carroll er era or whatever it was, but now they got a new coach in Seattle. Mm -hmm. But we got to just beat Seattle. Last year, Geno Smith, I thought, hurt us throughout that entire game, um, just being able to stay alive in the pocket, find guys, give guys DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett time to get open, running across the routes across the field. I think the one of the routes that sealed the game at the end was Tyler Lockett coming all the way across the field and Gino making a throw for him to catch it for a first down to to seal the game. So I think we got to be more concerned about that as opposed to what their record is. Mm -hmm. Throw the record out the window. We just haven't been able to beat Seattle. We got to go out and show that we can beat Seattle. Well, you named, named a couple of key players there, and I'm interested to get your take on this as a former DB. 
Uh, they have a three-headed monster at wide receiver in DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and Jackson Smith and Jigba. That's that's as good as any trio in the NFL. When you're going up against a, a team that – and Geno Smith has had a resurgence in Seattle. I mean, his career kind of looked like it was fading out, and he, he looks like he's a bona fide starter now for them. Um, when you're coming up against a team like that and they have those kind of receivers, I mean, a couple of them can you know really go deep. Tyler Lockett kills you across the middle. He's kind of like their version of Amon Ra. What, how how fo- how focused are you on that trio of players all week long in practice in the meeting rooms? How much are you talking to the other safeties? How much are you talking to the corners? Like, what is that preparation like when you've got a, a trio of pass catchers like those guys? Well, you definitely got to be on the same page from a safety standpoint because all those guys are deep threats. You know, Tyler mm-hmm. Lockett. You know, maybe he slowed down a little bit in this in this you know career in this age. But at the end of the day, he's been a deep threat in this league. DK Metcalf being in his young prime, you know, you saw him last week. He's a deep threat. You can guy. go, man. Yep. Um, Jackson Smith and Jake, but the same thing. Those guys are deep threat wide receivers, and Geno Smith can stay alive and get the ball down the field to him. So as a safety group, you know, when you go in games like this, you know, for me, it used to always be, you know, the respect that they got they 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 got the opportunity to Put up points quickly if we give up big plays mm-hmm. but i also felt like we have the opportunity to make plays because they're going to put the ball up in the air they're not mm-hmm. going to be a team that's going to check it down to the running back all game or just do look no they're going to push the ball down the field at some point and we got to be ready to make plays so that's definitely things that they're talking about from a secondary standpoint i think d-line front guys talking about they got to be able to get geno smith on the ground get mm-hmm. pressure on geno smith and be able to contain him when he goes to run because like i said last year i thought geno smith really really hurt us in the game like i said I, if you look at the numbers i don't know if he rushed for a lot of yards i don't know what it was but it was just like he had a control over the game he had a control over the game staying alive not taking sacks getting out the pocket completing little passes I just felt like he controlled the game and, and 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 was a big reason why the Lions lost. I could be totally wrong on this, but the, I was thinking this when you mentioned Gino, you know, staying a lot. I feel like that might have been his highest rushing game last year was the Lions. I, I could be wrong on that, but I remember, you know, him hurting the Lions with his legs, and he's not really he's not a run first guy, but he can he can go you know pick up a first down and keep the chains moving. And yeah, you gotta you gotta stay in front of that. One of the guys tasked with that is going to be Aiden Hutchinson. He's had a phenomenal start to the year, uh, have four and a half, five sack game already, leading the NFL in quarterback pressures. Um, he's a local guy. Obviously, people in Michigan love him from going to U of M, and now he's at Detroit, and, and he's he's only in his third year. Where would you put him in the hierarchy of the NFL's best defensive players right now? I mean, you know, I think he has to be up there. Um I, I wouldn't put him over guys like, you know, TJ and, and the mm-hmm. Bosa's and, you know, Micah and guys like that. But he's definitely ascending um, and on that trajectory. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those guys where, you know, if you want to get put in that category, you know, doing it consistently over time when everybody's trying to stop you from doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, propelling your team in big moments. And and that's what I was talking to somebody the other day, and I was telling them, people have to understand that impact plays are far better than regular plays. You can have a sack in the first quarter. You can have an interception in the first quarter. You can have a big throw from a quarterback in the first quarter. People are going to remember what's happening in crunch time. If crunch time comes up and we're not getting throws from the quarterback, we're not going to feel like he's the right guy. Mm. If crunch time comes up and we're not getting sacks from Aiden or pressure from Aiden, we're going to wonder where is he at in the biggest moments of the game. When crunch time comes and we're not getting stops from the secondary, interceptions, PBUs, we're going to wonder where are those guys at because that's when it matters. So a guy can have five interceptions but if they're not impactful in the sense that guy that had maybe two of them, but they were all big plays, big games, people are going to remember those two and feel like that guy's all over the place mm. as opposed to the guy that caught five, but they were at moments that 
really, I ain't gonna say didn't matter in the game, mm-hmm. but were not as big in the game. And so, you know, Aiden, we had the five, four and a half, five sacks, but we lost that game. Mm. We lost that game. And so, yeah, he has that on his resume, but we need him to go out and get four or five sacks on Monday night against Geno yeah. Smith in Seattle. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's what we need him to do. We need to go get that. And, you know, then you'll start to, you know, really, really, really move up in, in those defensive ranks, in my opinion. Yeah, well, that's an interesting point. Do you think that's a – some guys just seem to have a knack for that, right? I mean, some guys just seem to have a knack for the moment, the big play, the right at the right time. What? what how How can you explain that? Is that is that something that – is is it you know just time in the in the film room? I mean you know years in the league. Some guys have it right. I mean how do how do you explain that phenomenon? Because it's definitely a thing. Well, I mean from a from a defensive stand from a defensive back standpoint, it's about opportunity in the moment, and mm-hmm. then it's it's also about um, a lot of guys. This happens a lot, man. A lot of guys they go after plays instead of allowing the plays to come. Most of the time. Most of the time, if you just play your responsibility and play it right, the play comes right to you. <laughs> Most of the time, guys get excited, they get greedy, and they try to go and make a play, and they leave a responsibility, and then the ball gets thrown right to where you left. Yeah. Um, so it's about understanding the situation, understanding the moment, knowing what the quarterback likes in that moment. But these also are great quarterbacks. They they they're throwing mm. the ball. Um, but yeah, you're right. Some guys just have a knack. You know, I used to feel like, you know, I wanted to be a, a guy that was making a play in in the biggest moments of the game. That's mm-hmm. that was just kind of my my thing. And so when I started feeling like, all right, man, we need to play right here. Like this is a this is a moment. Obviously, you take a, a play anytime you get it mm-hmm. from a player standpoint, right? But we would have big moments, and I would just be like, all right, man, it's my time. I need to go make a play. Like, I need to make a play. We need a big play right here. We need a big play. And I feel like I would just kind of talk myself into to, to mm-hmm. going out and making a play. And, you know, a few of those games, I went out and made a play. And those are the plays that, you know, the people remember the most. Um, you know, certain interceptions, they don't even remember those. I said, like, Oh, yeah, 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 you did have that, but this one right here, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know, those are the ones that they remember. So, you know, it's about just time and having a knack and just going to play football and being disciplined, mm-hmm. um, in, in the biggest moments and not, not, not falling to the pressure and trying to do too much in the situation, but doing exactly what you've been trained and exactly what you prepared yourself to do. I think that's really interesting. I mean, that's that's probably a great way to explain why, you know, some dudes who test absolutely off the charts, like in the combine, the fastest dude on the field is not always the best dude on the field. I mean, like you got to have some of those traits that you're talking about. Is that something that you you could see in other guys? I mean, I, I don't know if you would, you know, you toot your own horn a little bit if you want to. Is that something? Because I would say you you weren't the biggest. You weren't the fastest dude on the field, but you played a long time in the NFL and made some plays like that. Is that right. something that you can you can see in some of the young Lions players now, maybe in the yeah, secondary I mean, or where else? I mean, the, the thing is, the thing is, football is an athletic sport, right? But you have to know how to play the game. Just because you're fast doesn't mean you can play football. It mm-hmm. means you can run. Right, <laughs> go, be a, go be a track star. Right, there's a lot of track guys that are fast and they can't play football. Right, there's a lot of guys that are big, they can't play football. So, knowing how to play the game is huge. Mm-hmm. Football IQ, understanding situations, understanding formations, understanding what the offense is going to try to do to you. What what are they doing to you? Noticing different things. Right, the offense that they're, they're lining up in the same formation but they're running this play or they're lining up in different formations and they're, but they're running the same. Like, can you pick up on those things? Can you notice certain things? Can you make adjustments in the middle of the game? Can you make adjustments on the fly in the middle of the play? Like, can you play the game of football? Do you Mm -hmm. study enough to understand everything that's going on so you can adjust to everything? So you can be aware of what is going on. Most people just try to rely on their athletic ability. They can run, they can jump, they're big, they're strong. 
that stuff doesn't always matter. Mm-hmm. It doesn't always yeah. matter. It gets you a little bit, but the best ones are going to be the ones that have those physical abilities that can run, they can jump, they can catch, they're strong, but they're students of the game. They study the game. They know how to play the game. Mm-hmm. And when you, when you get that, you know, for me, I was sitting here thinking a lot of times I thought like, you know, DB, DB, I mean, if you're athletic and you can this, you you can play. But then when you start to teach people how to play defensive back and you start mm-hmm. working with some of these younger kids, you start to realize that there's so many little skills that go into being a great defensive back that we've done them for so long to where, like, to me, it's just a natural thing. But to train somebody else to do it, it's like, man, this is kind of a lot of stuff. <laughs> this, is, this is really a lot of stuff all the way from how do you knock a ball down how do you read somebody's eyes how do you like it's a lot of things that go into it that mm-hmm. just because you can run doesn't mean <laughs> that you can do some of these things this i guess is why they call it a skill position because mm-hmm. it takes skill it just doesn't get put in the same category as a quarterback skill or uh, a baseball player what you call skill but being able to do some of the things that we have to do from a defensive back standpoint mm. or even a wide receiver standpoint, running backs, being able to read holes, cut, start, stop, move, stiff on, like, and it's happening so fast. Mm. So you got, like, you can't think, oh, I need to go. Like, you got to just go, boom. Like, and I think it's, it's way more difficult than, than people think of. Um, so, just because you're athletic doesn't mean you can play. You have to be a student of the game and know how to play the game. And I think some of these younger guys you're seeing, you know, guys like Brian, like Brian he, Branch. Like he knows yes. how to play yep. football. He's not the biggest guy out there. He's not the fastest guy out there, but he knows how to play football. And you see him continually make plays. He was he was one, the exact guy I was thinking of while you were kind of talking about those things, and 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 probably got like you said some of. the some of the best teaching you can get at a place like Alabama to learn those fine details and understand the position um, and, and put himself in a position to make plays. So on that, on that note, how do you see a guy like Brian Branch, another young guy like Terry on Arnold and, and new guys in, in the Lions secondary handling again, those three receivers we talked about earlier. I'm not sure. Is Kenneth Walker out again this week or is he back? I can't remember if I saw him on the injury report, but Zach Charbonnet, the running back, has stepped up. and done, they, They've got weapons on offense, and, and Geno Smith has done a good job of spreading it around to those guys. How do you see the secondary handling probably the best receiving uh, core that they've faced so far? I mean, I, I, I think they'll be fine. You know, I think the buff, the Buccaneers second, I mean, wide receivers were, were Solid. You know, pretty Godwin, comparable. Evans, Chris, yep. Godwin, Chris Godwin had a great day against us. You know, Mike Evans wasn't as loud, but he's still Mike Evans. So, mm-hmm. um, but we lost that game, right? Mm-hmm. So, I um, I think we match up pretty well. Um, obviously, DK is a is a big big guy. I don't know if anybody really matches up <laughs> well with him from our secondary standpoint. Um, but the thing about DK, we just gotta frustrate DK. We can't let DK get going early because if he gets going early, then he's a nightmare to deal with. But mm-hmm. if we can if we can frustrate him early, then he'll be he'll be a, a, a non factor in, in that game. And so um, you know, and, and Tyler, Tyler's just a veteran guy that's been doing it for a long time. He's gonna make his plays. Um, uh, we gotta stick with him, but I think we can match up well with Tyler. Um, so I think it'll be a good test for us. Like I said, it's just I don't even know if it's the receivers for me, it's the team, it's Seattle. Yeah. For some some reason. We don't play well and do well against Seattle, and we have to change that this week. And and Aiden Hutchinson will be going up against another backup tackle. They've they've been banged up along their offensive line. So is Detroit right now. That's where I wanted to go next. Frank Ragnow is out in this game. He's a you know he's a mainstay on that offensive line at center. Graham Glasgow moves over, and he's played a lot of ball there too. He's an experienced guy at center. But typically, Jared Goff and the Lions have not done. At, they haven't done as well with Frank Ragnow out of the lineup, and he's really important to what they do. What are they? You know, what's the offensive line talking about this week without that veteran guy in the middle? You know, what is what's going through Jared Goff's head when he knows, like, damn, I'm not. 
I'm not quite as comfortable with Frank not in there, like just, you know, preparation for a, another good team, you know, without a key uh, offensive lineman. You know, I think those guys are pros. Obviously, Frank right now is an all pro, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but I think I think the next guy, is that'll be fine. I mean, they got a strong unit. Mm-hmm. Um, Jared Goff's a veteran guy. Guys like Panay, guys like Taylor, they're gonna they're gonna be ready to go. They, that that unit takes pride in, in being a great unit. They're not an individual, although they have great talent individually. They are a unit. They're gonna play together. They're gonna understand each other, what we need, and, and, and they'll be ready to go. I don't think it'll be uh, a big deal from that standpoint as far as you know Jared Goff for the uncomfortable or anything like that. I think the run game will still get going. You know, I think I think all those guys are good. Frank is just, you know, on another level of good. But I think all those guys would be fine. And so I don't think that would be as um, as big of a, of a loss. Although we do want Frank back quickly. And that dude just, he's a, he just battles, man. He battles through injury year after year after year. And he's just still so good, there, man. man. Yeah, it's, it's he's still so there. good. Important to that team, important to the middle of that lineup. But like I said, Graham Glasgow, a lot of versatility has had. I think I think I heard thirty eight starts at center. So I mean, that's not that's not a new spot for him. He should be fine. And then the young guy, I'll probably butcher his name. I was Sika. Whatever. Okay, I'll say it one time. He'll move in. <laughs> he'll move into the guard spot. And right. yeah, you're right. I mean, that's that's a group that's played together before. Uh, I know, you know, the Lions want to establish the run. They want to get both Montgomery and Gibbs going. Um, Laporta has been a little bit more a part of what's going on. So how do you how do you see this one playing out? I think it's a. I, I feel like this kind of a pick em game. I think the Lions are favored actually on the line. But like you said, something about Seattle has just it's just been tough for the Lions. So how, how do you see this one playing out? What needs to happen for the Lions to get a win? Well, I think we've seen through three games what needs to happen and what's the recipe for the Detroit Lions. I mean, you look at game one, um, they went back and forth, but when it came crunch time, they hand the ball off to David Montgomery and they go and win the game. You look at game two, Jared Goff, they came out trying to throw the ball way too much. They didn't establish the run game and they threw the ball way, way, way too much. And they didn't, times, they, and yeah. they didn't win the game. You come out, you look at the Arizona game, Six out of the first nine plays went to David Montgomery. You go right down the field and you score a touchdown. Mm. And so I think we've seen that when they focus and establish the run game, it just gets them going. It's better for them, and they got to be okay. I think they underst- I think their defense is good enough for them not to feel like they have to score every possession. So I think they I think they have to come out and try to run the ball, even if it's not going well for you early in the game your commitment to the run game will open up your pass game, will keep it open. Because mm-hmm. if you go away from the run game, those linebackers are not biting up on the play action. That's going to limit Sam Laporte. That's going to hurt Amon Ross St. Brown across the middle. That's going to take the deep shots away from Jamison Williams. You have to get those safeties creeping up around the line of scrimmage. You have to get them to get in those man coverages, those things where you can get some one-on-one matchups on the outside with Jamison Williams. So they have to come out and establish the run game. They have to come out with a with that mentality that we're going to run the ball. Our O line is going to be tougher than your D line, and we're going to run the football. And when they do that, they've been successful. Their defense can hold up if they don't come out and put up 14 points real quickly. The defense has been holding up for the most part throughout the season, and I think they got to stick to that. If not, who knows what happens? All right. We're going to end with this. I got five real quick ones, five real quick specific questions for this game. Want to see how you think it's going to play out. You ready for that? Got it. Who has the longer reception in the game, DK Metcalf or Jamison Williams? Jamison. Jamison Williams. Aiden Hutchinson over under one and a half sacks. Under. Geno Smith over or under 20 and a half rushing yards. We talked about keeping him in the pocket and not letting him get out of him, do some damage. Over. Over. David Montgomery, yes or no, touchdown score? Yes. And last but not least, let's go back to your old stomping grounds. Will the Lions secondary pick Geno Smith off on Monday night? Yes. 
There you have it. 25 minutes in with Glover Quinn. Lions take on Seattle in Detroit on Monday night. Let's talk real quick about that. Monday night football. I don't know. How did you play? How many times did you play Monday night football? And how cool is that? Oh, man. I played a lot of them, man. And, you know, it's out. It's different. I, I will say that. You know, when you're younger in your career, you're excited to play on Monday night. The older you get, you realize, man, it's the last game of the week. It's <laughs> yeah, Monday. Week. It's, yeah, it's yeah. a late game. You know, as you're playing on the East Coast, the game don't start to 8-15. Mm-hmm. You're not getting out of there to after midnight. And then you get Tuesday off and you're right back in there. And mm-hmm. you, So the later you get in your career, you just kind of like, <laughs> freaking eight, man, why do we have Monday night games? You know but <laughs> when it's a big game, you know, you're excited yeah. for Monday night. But, you know, the more you play, you'll probably rather play on a Sunday night if you had to get that primetime game like that. Mm-hmm. Sunday night is probably the, the good one. Because Monday, you've seen everybody play all week. They played Thursday. You've seen the Sunday games. Then you've seen the Sunday night games. And now we finally get to play. And you have to wait all day on Monday. Like, you yeah. get up and go. You got to wait all day Monday. you just like, come on, guys. Can we get the game going already? <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a funny but, perspective, man. I like that. But early in career, you're excited, you know what I'm saying, because you probably grew up watching Monday Night Football. Sure. And, and so now you get an opportunity to play Monday Night Football. So it's 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 different for a, lo- a lot of people. I'm sure the young guys would be excited, ready to go. I remember my first Monday Night game, and I remember a lot of my Monday Night games, you know, play well. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's fun. It's, it's different. It's all eyes on you. It's the only game on. So, it's a good thing. It's just like I say, when once you get older, you start realizing, like, come on, guys, can we can we get this game in? <laughs> I hear you. Well, there you ha- there you have it. Like you said, all eyes on the Lions and the Seahawks on Monday night. Glover, thanks so much for the time. Uh, we'll be back to talk again next week. All right, man. Appreciate it.